one day later. Day 913, an important review. You arrive at work a little early, despite a stressful journey in. You still aren't quite sure of everything that happened, though if the swarm of CCOs all over the building is anything to go by, this isn't just a Channel 1 matter. This is confirmed. When you are informed, you need to speak to Bozeman immediately and are escorted to his office. Yeah. We, I think we really angered Advance this time. Especially since Channel 1 is publicly owned by Advance now, right? So great, great. You sit nervously outside, waiting for your boss. A few minutes later, the bossman arrives, disheveled, and with a stern-looking CCO in tow. Ah, yes, Winston. Good. This is Specialist Abels. She will be observing this interview. Please, come inside and take a seat. The ruddy-faced man bustles into his office and leaves the door open for you to follow. The few times you've been here before, it was immaculate, with everything in its proper place. Not so today. Yeah, I mean, just look at the... like, there's recording equipment everywhere. It must be serious for Bozeman to be this flustered. So, Alex, do you know why you're here today? Bozeman's eyes are sharp, and his gaze is fixed on your face from across the desk. Abel's is standing behind you, out of sight, but definitely not out of mind. <laughs> if I play dumb? <laughs> um, no, not really. I wasn't involved with anything that happened yesterday. What happened last night was nothing short of the culmination of a heinous and outrageous campaign of terror that the disrupt have been reaping on this nation and its territories. Bozeman shoots a glance behind you to your left, where your CC observer is standing. And it is, of course, our duty to root out this rot wherever we find it, to prevent anything like last night from happening ever again. I've been asked by Advance to perform interviews with all staff members involved and will be submitting a personal review of your performance, both during the incident in question and throughout your time here. This can only end well. Hey, this is why I've been playing those advanced tapes all the time, okay? Because I, I mean, I was messing around with Disrupt, but I was still doing what you asked me to do. I think that's a little bit too nuanced, though. I don't think they'll, like, really account for that. <laughs> he shoots you a quick smile. Don't worry. It'll all be fine. Arranging some papers, Bozeman clears his throat and begins. Obviously, a lot happened last night and I have a number of interviews to conduct today, so I'd rather none of them take any longer than necessary. Please be brief, concise, and clear in your answers. You nod. Reviewing the broadcast, we noticed something a little odd about a particular camera choice. It was while everyone else was talking... Oh, where did I put it? Ah, yes, here we are. Do you recognize this? With a flourish, Bozeman produces the leaflet from the notice board and places it on the desk in front of you. Mm. Yeah, they know, they know, because they arrested the lady, the agent that was in the play. I think we should just, you know, we shouldn't be like, huh, what? I don't know what's going on. I assumed it was just part of the set. Why else would it have been there and on camera? Well, that makes sense. You aren't responsible for maintaining the set. You can assume that what's there is meant to be, after all. You get the feeling that at least some of the above was for the benefit of the CCO in the room. <sighs> Thank you, Alex. And again, for Abel's benefit. You're so loyal. Not exactly subtle there. There was one thing we noted during the finale of the notice board. Bozeman picks up some notes on the other side of his desk. You seem to play an odd choice of sound effects relatively early on. Now, the script was expecting laughs, but for all three, you chose to play booze. Why did you do that? Mm. We don't have freedom, so I feel like talking about freedom is kind of like saying, you know, it's, uh, these aren't, it's not as clear though. I think Bozeman wants to save me. Throughout my time here, I've been a great, I've been a great employee. They love me. It's just this one time that I... I'm being a little bit questionable here. Okay. Uh, don't talk back. This is kind of talking back. I felt they were the most appropriate choices. Art is subjective after all. Well, of course. Obviously, we want all of our shows here at Channel 1 to be as successful as possible, and we allow our staff a significant degree of autonomy. I'm sure no one would try to fault you for simply having a different sense of humor. 
You can see Bozeman is frowning as he writes this, clearly not convinced by his own words. Maybe he likes you more than he thought? How many other people would he be interviewing today? Oh, I l thank you, Bozeman. Thank you. He made me work on the Saturdays and the weekends, but I'm glad to see that our relationship is not that bad. <laughs> Towards the end of the show, there appear to be some issues with the sensor equipment. At this point, Bozeman pauses for a moment, putting a lid on his pen and placing it carefully on the desk, perpendicular to his notebook. How do you explain the fact you censored perfectly acceptable language during the final segment? Uh, I think Bozeman gave me an out here already. He said there are some issues with the equipment. Yeah, there seemed to be an issue with the machine. Frank probably forgot to do his checks again. I suppose it's certainly possible the machine could have malfunctioned. Much more likely than the malfunctioning of such a competent employee. We'll make sure to have maintenance look at it right away. With the price we paid, I expect it to last at least another 20 years, just like the last one. Bozeman chuckles. How many questions will you have to answer? At this point, Bozeman took out a pair of glasses and placed them, somewhat delicately, on the end of his nose. Then the portly man leaned forward to examine his notes in detail. Now obviously, we expect the odd bit of interference here and there unavoidable. However, he paused, turning the page at an agonizing pace. Interference is not the same as terrorist propaganda. Would you care to explain how quite so much of their messaging found its way onto our airwaves? Human error, you know. I'm a great employee, but sometimes I make mistakes too. With everything else going on, I just didn't realize until it was too late. Out of the corner of your eye, you note Specialist Abels is visibly more attentive, awaiting your boss's response. Well, it's certainly true that accidents happen. And with the various stresses of last night's broadcast, I don't think anyone could begrudge you a slight drop in the tension. Bozeman smiles warmly at you as Abel's returns to their passive stance. You offer a strained smile back. Thank you, Bozeman. A loud creak breaks the growing silence as Bozeman leans back in his chair. The tape of that poor Miss Brightman. Why did you play it? Help me understand. Why play that tape? Oh my god, there's so many questions! We did so many things! As you meet his gaze, you're almost surprised to see an earnest concern in the old man's eyes. Ooh, this one's... Uh... No, this is... um, We don't negotiate with terrorists, right? Bozeman said that before. But this one seems a little bit antagonistic, too. But in a playing innocent sort of way. It seemed like the news. Isn't that what we do? Show the news? You watch as Bozeman slowly cleans his glasses before answering. Well, at the end of the day, you chose to do it, Alex. I don't know if I'd done the same in your shoes, but I think it's clear enough you thought it was the right thing to do, and that's all we can ask of you. He clears his throat and leans forward again, a smile once again on his face. I believe that's all I had for you, anyhow. Thank God it's over. Hmm. I think that's all the information we need for now, thank you. Could we have the room, please? This last is to the CCO, who grudgingly accepts, and you hear the door close behind her. Oh, it's a her now. It was there earlier. Look, Alex, I don't know how involved you were last night, and frankly, I don't want to know. But honestly, it doesn't look good. I've done what I can because I like you, but I can't promise it'll be enough. Best to just go home for now. There's no work for you until we get a new satellite tower up anyway. As you leave, you see what you could almost swear is sympathy in the old man's eyes. Back to normal? Oh my god, that was the longest interview of my life. They nailed down every single little thing I did yesterday. Holy crap. And I did all of them. I just basically didn't do the ones in the very beginning where they were like, hey, choose this camera angle. Ugh. Oh, wow, big skip. Day 1217. A banquet for some. It's your anniversary. A week away could have been just what the doctor ordered for you and Sam. But after speaking to the travel agents, 
There's just no way you can afford it. Maybe next year. Still, just because you can't have a holiday doesn't mean you can't make tonight special. You have the day off today, so you could try to make a nice romantic meal for them this evening. Though they did expressly tell you not to bother this morning. You think a cheap last-minute gesture won't change anything were their exact words. That's a little bit, I mean, Sam sounds kind of passive-aggressive. I still want to try something. I mean, I'll make it to them next year and I'll do something nice tonight. It'll be nice to have a lovely evening together. You get to work, turning the house into the perfect romantic setting for tonight. Everything's going according to plan. Sam's going to love it. Impatiently, you wait for them to arrive. You even had time to single-handedly clean the entire house, floor to ceiling. It took hours. But Sam will appreciate it, and that's all that matters. You hear keys in the lock and put the final touches in place. So I have to imagine that there is a branch here, right? If I had more wealth, then we'd probably be going on that holiday vacation. But I don't, so. Which I feel like is more realistic anyway. As Sam steps into the hallway, you're waiting in the doorway to the kitchen, dressed to the nines and acting as nonchalant as possible. Alex? What? What's all this? Oh my god, did you clean? And what's that smell? They give you a quick kiss as they step past you into the kitchen, where the banquet is laid out, candles lit, with Charlie standing quietly, grinning. Oh my god, Alex. Happy birthday, Sam. Happy anniversary! Charlie echoes, and Sam turns to you, smiling with tears in their eyes. Alex, it's perfect! Sam rushes over and kisses you softly, only breaking off when you get a less than subtle cough from Charlie. <clears throat> so, I got officially accepted into the Community Cohesion Management Program! Charlie bursts out. What did you just say? Charlie picks up a rucksack next to him and heads towards the front door. Have a great evening! Don't do anything I wouldn't do. I'll be around to friends tonight and be back tomorrow, so don't wait up. Sam meets your eyes and you both chuckle. You pull out Sam's chair for them. Oh, we just kind of glossed over it, but uh, I mean, Charlie being in that kind of position is a little bit worrying. Why, thank you, Sam says, taking a seat and grinning at you. So Charlie's been busy. They shake their head as you take your own seat opposite them. Tomorrow. For now. You really didn't have to do all this, Alex. I know. I wanted to. I love you, Sam. I love you too. They breathe, admiring the panoply of food you've prepared for them. <sighs> now where on earth do I begin? They laugh as you pour the first glass of champagne of the evening. You're very lucky to have such a wonderful family. Who could ask for more? Well, my my daughter could be here for one. <laughs> oh, my poor daughter, my sweet daughter. All we have of her mementos is the postcard and the lighter. Day 1764, a job down. 1764, how long has it been? Oh my god. So this rub is just... I guess they haven't been doing too much then, because they've been squashed. Oh, it's nearly five years. Oh my gosh. Everything's ready. You and Sam have been trying to watch Bullet Man for years, but you missed it in the cinemas, and it never seemed to be in stock when one of you went to pick up the VHS. Now you're just waiting for them to get home so you can start. You hear the front door open as you put a bowl of popcorn on the coffee table. We're all ready to go! Get your butt in here! Sam comes in with a vacant stare, ignoring both film and snacks as they sit down next to you. You have to actually nudge them to break their stupor. Sam? What is it? I, um... I've just been let go. From work. Sam is just staring into space. Apparently there just isn't a need for two nursery teachers anymore. Not enough children, so they can't justify the expense. Oh. Not enough children. People not having kids in dystopian times, I guess that makes sense? 
but oh, okay, okay. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. It'll be okay. You'll find another place. No, you don't get it. There just isn't that demand for younger years teachers anymore. Not just here, anywhere. I don't know what I'm going to do. What we're gonna do. You pull Sam into a hug. I know things are tough, but we'll think of something. How, Alex? We're barely scraping by as it is, and now... Sam begins to sob. We're going to have to sell the house. I can't see any other option. We've got too many debts to pay. Hey, it's manageable. It's supposed to be manageable. If that's what we have to do, fine. It's only the two of us living here now anyway. I suppose you're right. Still, I hate the idea of losing this place. Think of everything that's happened here, Alex. They fall silent, thinking. Eventually, you start the film, but neither of your hearts are in it. Too busy thinking about the future. Still, a house isn't everything. It's the people who make it a home. Home is where the heart is, after all. I guess Charlie basically moved out now. I'm so... I feel like a failure of a, of a spouse, of a parent, that I can't provide for my family properly. But I, I'm hoping love, love can make up for it. And I feel like love is something that, you know, we have a strong bond, me and Sam. Not sure about my kid, my pro-advanced kid, Charlie, but um, I think me and Sam should be on the same page. Whoa. Day 1975. Three years since the uprising. The sterility. Hello, Alex. I've checked the schedule for tonight. Whoa. Nothing major to report. Certainly isn't anything you can't handle. Still, at least my daughter's in for Advance's new initiative. What the? That should liven things up a bit here. Keep up the good work. Oh my god, look at this. It's all like advanced logos. Okay, just a room with four walls. And three tapes. Advanced tapes. Are you kidding me? Oh my god. Oh. Wow, that's... We're not even pretending anymore. Oh, look at that gigantic advanced logo outside. The lights. I guess this rub has been squashed. And this is Jenny. She's the floor manager. Hi, Stacey. Mm. That's Colin. He, um... Too much... Team approved chart hits. Okay, go and bring your daughter to work, eh, Colin? Nah, nah, we don't believe in it. All right, come and sit next to Mum. <laughs> believe in what? Just days. How did it all go so right? That's followed by the This can't be it. Ten, ten seconds, everybody. We can't even rebel. One day's a myth. I explained so much. Okay, we are going in five, four, three. No walkie-talkie. Good evening and welcome to the NNN. I'm Megan Wolf. And who's this? In my even the country? lights are <laughs> well, it's teal. Well, bring your daughter to work day here at Channel One. So I'm joined tonight by my foster daughter, Stacy. Say hello, Stacy. Oh. Fuck you. All right then. Here are the stories that matter. To Foster. You. First up, with Advance confirming that the nuclear fallout from the 20-week war is to blame for the drop in birth rates across the territories. They're both good. I asked you, what keeps you going? I know that oh, the nuclear radiation. When I heard about this, but reading all That's why there's no kids. Really put the smile oh my god. Back on my face. This is from Sonia in Larkfordshire. I've had plenty of time to fill, so I've started a new hobby. Since I started knitting, I barely remember that 85% of the country is sterile. My record is this We have no future then! It's 124 meters long. Thank you for that. And if you've started a new hobby, do write in and tell us about it. Next up, you know how we love your uncanny comestible coincidences and... <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think this one really takes the What the hell is that? <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm more impressed by, Stacey. The things our viewers spot are the unbelievable way our menu centers... And they have some program where the kids are being adopted by people because Greg the kids don't have parents and the parents don't have kids. This lovely photo of their breakfast saying, I couldn't bring myself to eat my toast this morning because I could swear it bore the spitting image of the great Julia Salisbury's relatable face. The great that Julia Salisbury. Of jam. <laughs> Do keep those coming in. Come on, let me have a go. 
Uh, we've just got time for one more of your stories. And this one is an inspiring story of rehabilitation. Uh, that's it, just tell us who it's from. Yeah, and then read it out. Okay. Uh, apparently, this is from Sherry Intendant. Here I am, just six months out of Betterment. I'm healthy, sober and working thanks to the facilities I had access to on the inside. I'll never have to go back to my old life of stealing cars and burning down charity shops. I just wanted to share. We absolutely love hearing the way our neighbours and team members have been able to become better people. So do let us know your stories here. What is that obnoxious music in the background? Come on, give it a try. Let us know your stories here at the NNN. What the hell is this? Okay, I don't want to follow it, but if there's not even going to be a disrupt around here, there's no point in me not following it, right? I'll just be endangering my family. So until I see some sign of resistance, I'll just follow what they say. Frankly, there's no choice. Look at this. Some kid missing... Oh, God. Tonight on the NNN, it's time to celebrate this week's team lottery winners live from the Shakespeare Theatre right here in the capital. We're going to hand over... Megan Sullivan had it all these years. You don't think much of her either, eh, Stacey? She's got a lot more going for her than you wankers. Okay. Surprising vote of approval there from Stacey. Let's go live to that right now. Let's go live to that. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this week's team awards. The great Julia Salisbury. Of all the many duties I have as team leader, this is by far the most pleasant. As I so often say to you, the uneven part... She doesn't seem to be afraid to express herself, though, Stacey. ...firmly behind us. This is the new future. And I say to you, it's better now. I am delighted to be joined here tonight by one of the oldest people in Territory One. He was born over 107 years ago. Please oh. give a warm team welcome to Alfie Tajbadger. Are they using him as an example of someone who's healthy so, and Alfie, had a good life? You must have seen so much in your lifetime. What have been some of the highlights? What have been some of the highlights? Alfie? Is he all right? Is he all right? Who would be? His hearing aid isn't turned on. His oh. hearing aid isn't turned Could on. you turn it on? <laughs> this is unrealistic. It drains the battery. Well, uh, <laughs> tell him that we'll buy him a brand new battery after the presentation. <laughs> People with hard of hearing don't whisper, they yell. This is unrealistic. <laughs> yeah, he says that's fine then. Yeah, he says that's fine then. And I will, I will help him with that, yeah. If you would. <laughs> Sorry, can't get the staff. <laughs> that guy's getting executed. Yeah. We got it. So, Alfie. What? You're 107 years old. Oh, don't bloody remind me. <laughs> Would you like to tell the audience what that's like? Would you like to tell the audience what that's like? Where is everybody? Where is it? In prison? Or out there, in the dark. Out there. <laughs> well, bless him, it's not just the ears. <laughs> Who are you? Uh, two sugars, please. <laughs> I'm Julia Salisbury, the Prime Minister. <laughs> a lovely story. Who are you really? No, no, I, I really am the Prime Minister. Oh. No, you're the, the fewer. You're a, uh, you know, a woman. A woman. Women can do anything men can do these days, Alfie. Oh. Including and genocide. Standing up. <laughs> I can't say I've ever tried. No, I didn't think so. Two sugars, please, and not too much. I mean, you can. It'll just get everywhere. <laughs> Whoa. 
going to ask you about my life. Well, I'm not sure we have enough time left now for that. So when I was nine, I wanted a pet, so I asked me mum and pap. There was no television then, back then, you know. We made our own to entertain out of coal and roadkill. <laughs> well, that's fascinating. So they got me a pet, see? But it weren't a dog. They told me it were a dog, but it were a stone. A stone? Yes. So I called it Patch, which were a popular name for a dog back then, on account of the king having a patchy face. And I decided to I'm really counting on some remnants of this Raptor regroup sometime. Oh, how romantic. She threw my dog in the river. That was the day I decided I'd never marry. <laughs> and that's the secret to your long life? Oh, no. I've been married seven times. Oh. Divorced eight. There was a mix up with number three, see? Yes, I'm just lucky. I'm just lucky. Are we going back to the home soon? Uh, soon, Alfie. <laughs> yeah, taking out of the transition home. And we're all here. The weekly Territory One Team Awards. <laughs> First up tonight is a lady who really knows how to put in the extra hours. She works at a transition centre in Hamble Bamblebury and she has single-handedly allowed more families to unburden each other than any other nurse in Territory 1. In the uneven path, she'd have been locked up. That's code for killing people, right? Tonight, she is being honoured as a team player. Please welcome Daphne Snister. She killed all of them, so the family's got unburdened. Uh, are you here to change me? Just uh, give her a medal, Alfie. There's a good boy. <laughs> oh, he's the one giving the freaking medal. I thought he was... I think everyone thought he was the winner. And don't let it stink too long. I think you're supposed to give me one of those. Oh. Give me one of those. Well, I, 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 there he goes. Look. <laughs> I can't get the arms up any higher than that. You'll have to go down, love. <sighs> Thank God those fractious times are behind us. <laughs> now the territories are thriving. Are we in? As the act you said to the bishop. <laughs> yes, thank you. I've got it from here. Well done. Daphne Snister, everybody. Whoa. Now, open your envelope and find out what you've won. <laughs> whoa, <laughs> whoa. Back there. She's tougher than one of Peter's homemade apples cakes. Got it. Oh, you shoot. <laughs> I've won a holiday for two in Territory 15. It used to be called San Palmarino, didn't it? Uh, I believe it did, yes. But we don't call it that anymore. With that, then, it's easier to remember. I'm not gonna... We're all one nation now. <laughs> My small act of rebellion. Isn't it still on fire? And Daphne Snister, everyone! <laughs> Oh, what about my change? I've been in these wide fronts for three days now. Uh, we'll get to that, Alfie. <laughs> oh, right, you are, uh, Next up tonight is a couple from Farnley who, after a rocky start losing their family's ill-gotten gains to the Assets and Wealth Act, have really embraced the new future, setting up a community farm and petting zoo in their local area for all the local children to play. Please welcome Otho and Le Amelia Jackson Randy Gannett. These last names. Okay, I'm I'm gonna listen to advance, but my small act of rebellion is being like, whoops, I forgot to censor the thing. I was in the trenches. I had a pal called Scotty Wilson. He was from way up north, so I didn't understand a bloody word he said. But he were my best mate. Should we just grab ourselves? Probably for the best. <laughs> And his best mate was Smudger Ace. There was them two. Friendly Eric, Unstable Terry, and of course, Leggy Sydney. Oh god, I saw this in the Olympics and it like, it kind of weirded me out. Athletes giving each other the medals instead of somebody giving it to them. girl any of us has ever seen comes up. She's dead now. They all are. Smudger and Scotty never made it home. Fiddly got shanked in Frank Worth prison in argument over an olive. And Terry, he exploded quietly at home. Sydney got a fatal skin condition. 
scratch yourself to death. It makes you think. Thanks, Alfie. Great contribution. <laughs> so, Otho and Lavinia, a petting zoo. After we lost all our wealth, but we discovered there were actually people who had never even owned a pony. Wow. So we decided to do something about it. Uh, that's the type of people we are, you see. The advantage of a private education, probably. Well, I'm sure we could debate that all night, but there's no time. A so boo? let's see what you've won. Yes, there's something I want to say to you. Oh, absolutely. Every citizen of the new future has my ear. When advance came to power, you took all of our wealth. You took the shirts off of our backs. Quite literally, in my case, I used to collect shirts. I'll have the rest of it too. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Security! Oh God, not again. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. Ah! And the news are not good bedfellows. Keep those flappy bits off my channel, Alex. And you are? And you are? Oh, no. What's a go? I mean, it's bad for the ratings. It isn't right and it isn't fair. You tell it, nope. girl. That's my wife, you know. No, no, you don't. You can't think pearls with swine, it isn't right! We used to have three horses, then done to Bethel and Hunwell! And now what have we got? Two mangy goats, one mongrel dog called Kenneth, and a rooster that won't bloody shut up! Can we get this over quickly with- Give the lady back her ponies! Oh, here we go again. Hello, Alfie Tad Badger. Peace to me, Whoa! Oh, don't worry, love. I'll protect you. Oh, 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 oh. 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 It feels like so long ago when we last saw streakers. When I was in my twenties, you go to the promenade at Shining on Sea and watch all the pretty girls on the beach. <laughs> I mean, I don't agree with the rich people wanting to become rich again, but anything is better than what we have right now. And try to win a block of lard. <gasps> she got tased! You couldn't buy lard in those days. You had to win it. We should show it. We should show this. He was so much simpler back then. Boys were boys. Girls were A little bit, right? Everyone else was recruited by the circuses. <laughs> There were loads of them, you see. A balancing but act. I gotta keep my boss happy. Yeah, gotta keep... Candy floss. You hear the music. <laughs> There's a pipe organ. You drifting over the nearby fields. My <laughs> mum used to call it the most magical sound in the world. This was before she lost her hearing after giving a particularly loud round of applause. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, did, did, did you ever go to the circus? What's that, Alfie? Uh, the circus. Yeah, it's all down right. Yeah, just a tea pet. <laughs> well, that was an unexpected dose of naked nostalgia. <laughs> Some people simply can't let go of the past. That's why I look in joy and fervent admiration at the younger generation. So cohesive, such a team. And with fertility falling throughout the territories, we should value our fabulous new generation now more than ever. Our final winner tonight is a go-getter who really went and got him, helping to root out more than 170 disrupt collaborators in his own name. There's still some. Since then, he's gone on to be a senior cohesion cadet leader and organized all of the entertainment at last year's camp. God, I hope it's not. Our final winner Better not be my son. Edwin Neverlay. Okay, who? Some kid! Wow! Prime Minister. It's an absolute pleasure to finally meet you. We're very similar, in my opinion. Uh, well, I've never been much of a role model. <laughs> Nonsense. Prime Minister, you have saved this country. You have fought enemies, foreign and domestic, with nine fists. As with my own tiny fists have I. Well, let's open the envelope and find out what you've won. <laughs> Maybe it'll be a fist enlargement. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh. A year's internship as a behaviour coach at Betterment. <laughs>
Let's show the fools where they went wrong, eh? Well, actually, betterment is about rehabilitation, Edwin. Absolutely. And if they don't reintegrate, we retaliate. Just like you do, and liberation does. Even you. she's freaked out by that. And stay vigilant. Report the non cohesives. Be a team player. That concludes tonight's award. Uh, join me next week when. Even she was like, what the hell? A lot more normal. That's Look at him! Prime Minister Salisbury there at a highly eventful team award ceremony. Any thoughts on this week's winners, Stacey? The nurse was fucking scary. The pre tees were saggy, and that little prick will never lose his virginity. Okay. Well, maybe his fist can help with that. If a little profane. After the break, we'll be going live to a star studded premiere. You won't believe who's on the red carpet tonight. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this. Don't go anywhere. And we're out. Oh, Alex, one other. What's that? You're off already? I know you had to take the day of work, but you knew it. Songs of the new oh, I see. future. No luck still with you. I'm Stephane so sorry, darling. Of course. I'll speak to you later. Oh, Alex. Completely forgot what I was going to say. Blast it all. Still, I'm lucky to have her. Was that some new foster family arrangement? I missed the beginning of it. How many songs have they made? I'm I'm really impressed with how many songs are here. Like every single episode too. I think I kind of tanked my own rating a bit. Yeah, I think we were doing okay until the point where I decided to show the tasing. But I wanted to do it because it's my my small act of rebellion in this very hopeless age. Uh, uh, no, no, this is not good music. No. This is scarily impressive. <laughs> Songs of the new future. In record shops across the territories from Friday. I like the enemy soldier one. <laughs> Welcome back. Stacy's still here. Welcome Wishing back. she wasn't. Stacey's still here. Thanks, Stacey. Same. And in this segment, we're delighted and to have sent Robin segment, and Patrick to the movies. To yes, to the world premiere of The Automated, the starring Lawrence <gasps> Blunderclatch and the late starring great Lawrence Helena canterbury Boatshu. And, and all the stars are out tonight. We first covered this film almost five years ago. The Medicated. called The Medicated. Then, for mysterious reasons, the film was suddenly pulled the night before its release. Well, since then, executive producer George Focus has spent five long years polishing the film and turning it into a special edition and premiering tonight. With extensive state-of-the-art visual effects and a top-quality voice team, George says it's the movie he always wanted to make. Now, well, then what was the medicated then? The moon base, three solar rotations ago. Oh, it's the same shit. It's the exact same thing. It's a voiceover. Is this a wig? You think I don't grow that? You think I don't grow that? No, Dick, I'll kill you. Think of Sat, I'll kill you. There's something on your face, Chief Harrison. Oh my god. I wish you were real, baby. Flesh and blood. Captain Quasar. But you're just ones and zeros, baby. If only I'd noticed. Captain Quasar. You rested. But I didn't notice. Captain. I'm buffering, bitch, you said. I've got one on you. God damn it, lost it all. Here's a map. What's a map? Here's a map. What's a map? Okay, so head north on Interstellar Avenue. Left at the asteroid belt. Oh my god, my, my mouse is messing up. Venus. What are these symbols? 
this corner. This is the key. We could shut it down. Yes, yes, we could shut it down. Yes, we could shut it down. But we have to ask ourselves, who are we? No, you have to ask yourself if you should. If we should. Whoa! Cyber edition. Gosh, thrilling stuff. What did you think, Stacy? Thrilling stuff. What did you think, Stacy? <laughs> the robots were all right. She, she kind of liked it. They <laughs> certainly were. Let's go over to Robin Short they now in were. Western Let's Square, who Robin I believe has got the star of the show. Robin. Well, Megan, I'm joined by not one, but Megan. both of the stars, Lawrence Blunderclatch and Helena Canterbury Bochy. Thank you so much. No, thank you. It's thanks to shows like yours that Helena and I are even here. Don't you agree? Well, I couldn't. Did they even... Refilm it. Right, that was just a new dub <laughs> with some and, new uh, effects. You two have both become absolutely huge in the past couple of years, haven't you? Even huger, yes, that's right. I feel very lucky, very, very lucky to be born, well, you know. And Helena is in massive demand too at the moment. She's still the face of a major cosmetics brand and she's booked to do a one woman Leah in the summer. Wow, it sounds like you're both very busy. Mm -hmm. But is there any chance we'll get to see you together on screen again? No, no, I'm really not supposed to mention this, but we are doing a little something together. No. I'm playing a weathered starship captain from another galaxy and Helena is my droid companion. <laughs> But how does that work? I spend seven hours in makeup mode. No, um, how does Helena play a droid? Oh, we just pop her on a roller skate. Oh. Wow. Well, Aww. Lawrence Blunderclatch and Helena Canton boat shoot. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh no, Helena Patrick. Over to Patrick Bannon now. <laughs> Patrick, will we be seeing you in a movie anytime soon? Thank you, Robin. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I'm joined here by pop icon. It's Lil C. <laughs> and her father. This is an artistic <laughs> statement. And alien worshipper, Billy Bob Jean Short. Howdy. <laughs> so, Lil C, what's with the bag? She knows what she's done. She knows what she's Yo, her dad is creepy. Is it one of yours? No, you know it's not. We don't do that anymore. Ah, uh, yes, of course, your clothing label went bankrupt, didn't it? <laughs> yes, because a certain TV show failed to fulfill their contractual obligations. <laughs> well, you look great. <laughs> oh, well, that's probably due to her new cosmetics and wellness brand. Hey! I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> Let her show you. This hey, I can't even rely on the eye of the beholder anymore. We don't have those ads anymore. Glands. Ow, it's scented. <laughs> That was a surprise. And this next one, this is our new lipstick. We call this shade Lips. Oh, oh, oh wow. Why is it so salty? It's organic. Mm. And this, our next one, this body spray, mm. this is a body mist which rebalances your hormones <laughs> and actually smells like fertility. Oh, right, yeah. <coughs> wow. You feel that? Yeah. Yeah, that burns. Yeah. Oh. All this is part of Lil C's uh. new range, straight from my vein. Oh, cool. Ooh. Breeze Craglar. Uh. Uh. So, um, you're retiring from the music industry. That must be hard. Well, she's way past her prime, Patrick. It was very hard for her to accept at first, <laughs> but the industry's very, very sure about these things. <laughs> very, very sure well, I'm sure we can't convince you to release just one last album? We do actually have another album ready, but that's for the label to release in case she dies over the next 10 years or so. Wow. Well, Too real. Given the way she's going, you might get it by Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, we better let you get back. <laughs> oh, now, now, remember, we need the money. So, she's also available for parties, <laughs> weddings, funerals, and bar mitzvahs. Oh, thank you. Lil C. <laughs> That's Lil C there. Oh. oh, and it looks like Robin has got hold of Jesus. It's mm. so upsetting, Robin. <laughs> you look not well. Jesus, how are you? Yeah, you know, I'm good. I'm great. 
No offence to you, silencing me, silencing the truth. Uh, are you referring to your attempt to incite violence against the democratically elected leaders of this country on live TV? Yeah, exactly. Mm. And instead of being held a visionary, my manager and the agent, they all dropped me. Oh. oh. No. You can't break me when you didn't make me, you understand? See, I'm the voice, I'm the hope. You can lock me up, call the doctors, but only the moon can judge me. <laughs> so, what have you been up to since your team cut ties with you? Ah, you know, keep building, keep moving. I'm actually working on track right now, written, recorded, directed, all by myself. Can we hear a bit of it? Oh, well, no. I know I'd love to hear it, and I'm sure the people at home would love to as well. Yeah, sure, of course. Um, <clears throat> give me the mic. You don't have it ready, do you? The news tried to shut my mouth, but it won't be long until they go south. Because my name's Big J and you can't stop me. See, no censorship can stop me. That's all I've got at the moment. Did you just rhyme me with me? No! That you promised this wouldn't happen again. You're supposed to clap and say, well done, Julian, well done. Oh, well, well done, done Julian. Julian. Thank you. Thank you. I'm surprised we didn't have to censor that. Now, <clears throat> ask me a polite question, and I'll walk away nicely. Um, is it true that you're heir to a hotel chain? Why did you hear that? And that you're very it's much not actually poor. I'm sorry. Are you trying to censor me? He doesn't understand it. Oh my god, he doesn't know anything. Without his dad. <laughs> oh, Jesus there. Who really does seem to be going from strength to something. <laughs> There are just so many stars here tonight, Megan. It really is the who's who of whatever here. <laughs> I'm going to see who if is I can that? a moment with someone rather special. I hope you're not too jealous, Megan. Back to you. But I think Stacey and I are probably in quite enough trouble where we are. So, three big names there, Stacey. Yeah. Big names. Any thoughts about yeah. them? Maybe from your Big generation's names. perspective? You won't like my opinions. Oh, God, try me. Not many camera <laughs> angles today, huh? <laughs> well, <laughs> Bum Bonk is so old he's like one week away from a transition centre, so who cares? And Lucy was cool when I was like 12 or something, but now she's just another fucking loony. And Jesus is a disrupt loving wanker who should have died with the rest of them three years ago. Mm. Whoa. You're right. Well, she's pro advanced, but she's no, you're right. angry. I don't like your opinion. But no, thankfully, right. we can go back to Patrick now, <laughs> who has another familiar face now. to catch up with. Oh, Patrick! And shut your oh, mouth, Stacey. Like Enemy soldier is lit. We're on the edges of our seats, Megan, except we're standing. I apologize if I get overexcited, but any moment now, we're going to meet with the cast of the hottest new TV show. It's on every Saturday night. Have you guessed it? Yes, it's Big Chris's House of Chris's. And here's what? the man himself, Big Chris, hello! Oh, hey, hey. <laughs> oh, the, oh Chris! Chris from the, the guy show. in prison! Oh, it's really good to be It's here. one of the prisoner's <laughs> friends! Tit Wank to Tony! Oh, yeah, I mean... Come on! Oh, it's one sec. Sorry, it's impatient Chris. And rude Chris. Fuck off. Are the other Chris's here as well? Yeah, some of them couldn't make it, but some of the boys are here. Hello, we've got Boss Chris, Quiet Chris and Remorseful Chris. Oh, my. <laughs> Pocket Chris is around there somewhere, but I haven't seen him in ages. Uh, what about Chris Reloaded? Oh no, he's not. He couldn't make it. But uh, Chris Two Electric Boogaloo is here. <laughs> yeah. Oh Jesus Christ! It's Mormon Chris. Hello. Oh, <laughs> have you seen Cardboard Chris? There he is. Oi, oi. <laughs> he's an actual cardboard. This, but spill the gossip. Is there anyone in the cast you don't get on with? Oh, everyone would think it'd be killer, Chris, but he's all right. Yeah, he's really into crosswords. <laughs> I think it'd probably be uh, Surfer Chris. Oh, bummer, man. Or uh, Disco Chris. Oh! Honestly, he's god awful. Got a cheeky celeb insight there. <laughs> Oh shit, I better go actually, uh, before Sheriff Chris and uh, Chris Beard fall out again. Oh no, oh, sorry, I've got to go, too late, sorry. I'll, uh, I'll see you inside. No, yeah. thank you, thank you, big Chris. No, thank you, thank you. 
Amazing. Yes. Megan, you know, I've heard the production have actually had to hire out a separate screen exclusively for them. I'm sure they'll love the movie. What a pleasure to meet with such varied and talented stars. <laughs> Megan. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. What a <laughs> give me back the real Patrick uh, interview there on what looks like an amazing uh, night. They certainly know how to make an entrance. And the automated really does and seem to have unstoppable really written all over it because despite Boris Horsey in Hours magazine calling it Lawrence Blunderclatch's overly long suicide note in a review which ends with the words and he hasn't even had the decency to see it through, the film which is free to all residents of the territories has seen record pre-bookings and looks set to run for months and months, but let's go back to those lucky few seeing it tonight. Oh, I'm so jealous. Robin, you seen anything unusual there? Robin, you seen anything unusual there? Thanks, Megan. Well, will you settle for the territory's most eligible bachelor? Who is that? Five years ago, Steve Saxon was an unknown. Then a series of incredible performances in acclaimed productions from Hamlet's Jam to the curious rise of Algernon Ding Dong made him the most wanted man in drama. He's been voted sexiest man under 25 for three successive years. Now, let's see if he'll talk to the end. Excuse me, Mr. Saxon, Steve, have you got a moment to spare to talk to the NNN? Oh, hi, the NNN. You know, your show gave me my first chance at an audience, the raw me, Steve 1.0. I remember. Even I'm sorry, I have no idea who that is. so special about you. The whole thing is burned into my mind. A moment is the very least I can give your amazing viewers in return. Not that we're actually going anywhere, is she? Are you going to introduce us to your day? Oh, but of course, this I'm is... I'm Charlotte with Stanley Dash Hamilton. I was in Hey Friendship too. Oh! When you burned into your mind. I was in that. <laughs> no. Sorry. Don't remember you at all. Are you sure you were in that? Yeah. Algebra's first play. Uh, looks are really important. Well, if you say so, Steve. So, it's been a big year for you. I believe you've been tackling the Bard. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I've been working with uh, an enfant terrible called Quentin Sucker Punch. Uh, we've been doing all the Shakespeare's. Crikey, all of them. Yeah, so we shoot one a week. Uh, I play all the parts, so I learn them at the weekend and then we shoot them naked in his steam room. The lighting in there is really good. Sorry, did you say naked? Yeah, oh, well, he is. I'm in a variety of hats. It's a, an old theatrical tradition. I had a single out. It was called Look At Me. And you did that advert, didn't you, babe? Is that your dental floss? <laughs> <laughs> and the sex tape, of course. Steve! I don't like to talk about that. Although apparently it's available for 11 99 everywhere. Just ask your newsagent. So, what wow. is your favourite Shakespeare play then, Steve? Ooh. I like uh, the wordy one. It's starting soon. I'm going to miss the trailers and we haven't even got any popcorn yet. She'll be here. Oh, I'm sorry, we're going to make guys. What took you so long? Oh, I remember her too. Pigeon. I'll explain on the way in. Now, of course, I remember you from that legendary first appearance. Yeah. Her too. <laughs> you were such a serious little thing. You had that horrible sister. Yes. That was me. I'm the horrible sister. Give me your lunch you money. Yourself, babe. Looks are really important. Thanks, Steve. So, what have you been up to, Harriet? Well, actually, uh, last year I was overseas bringing art to the starving children from outside the territories. They may not have food, but they can still have Canadia. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> and uh, now I'm in an experimental physical theatre piece about the existential angst of women. Starving children outside the territories. Because everyone we inside is living so well. Thursdays. I was also the girl who got murdered in the bath in Night Slasher 3. Haven't seen it. But she was brilliant. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Steve. I think it's starting soon and I really need a thing called. Oh my god, you need the moon now. We're gonna completely miss the trailers, you were so selfish! Sorry. We've got to go. Oh, of course. Thank you so much for talking with us and enjoy the movie. Thanks. I love the NNN. I love you guys. Stop <laughs> showing off, sorry. Oh my god, Megan, I, I can't believe that. Steve Saxon, Harriet Wynn Statley Dash Hamilton, and <laughs> 
someone else can't Who is that? Me. I'm too starstruck. If I'm honest, I think I've just come. Back to oh, you, Megan. God. Thanks, Robin. <laughs> Lucky you and Thanks, enjoy Robin. the movie. Lucky the Automated opens in cinemas across the territories this weekend. What a star-studded event, eh, hey, Stacey? Star event. Who cares? Hey, no one goes to the cinema these days. Of course. No we'll be back these after these of messages. Course. We'll be back. I still go to the cinema. <laughs> They still have VHSs here, so technology is slowly catching up. Although the fighting has long passed, the dark clouds of war still loom over our united lands. And we all know who forced our hand. The tyrants of the world would spread their oppression to our team. Their war has denied us the right to our children, even as they still refuse to feed their own. But they have underestimated us, for though they may have scarred our bodies, they will never damage our will or break our mutual bonds. <laughs> Birth rates may be challenging, but happiness is everywhere. D. Satisfaction radiates from every metric. We are producing more and faster than ever before. Wait, I got a D, but like there was hardly any... To focus on our there was no camera switching available. What could I have done? We have less stress, and we are healthier than ever. Our new future is secure. We are strong together. Oh, I'm a little bit worried about our wages today. Safe from the divisive despots beyond our borders for whom cohesiveness is an alien concept. Every day, across these territories, neighbors support neighbors, and friends reach out to friends, strengthening and protecting each other through cooperation through unity as one advance always together i feel like we've never not had people interrupt us during the commercials we actually got to see the whole thing welcome back for our final segment tonight stacy and i are delighted to be joined by heat rash <laughs> Their new album, Girls and Why We Love Them album, All, girls, comes out this weekend. Oh, so, let me see if I can get this right. It's so, Nolan. I write the songs. Ronnie. That's what he says on my tattoo. Oh, you've got a tattoo of your name on yourself. Okay. In case he forgets it. <laughs> <laughs> this raconteur, you must be chinny. <laughs> Why do they call you chinny? Uh, it's because of this ugly old thing. I don't know what you mean. Oh, God, you're so fucking embarrassing. Dale. Crikey, Dale, you do not look old enough to be in a band. I get that a lot. I'm actually 23, the oldest one. I have a growth disorder. God, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't know that. It's so cool, PT. Uh, it's only messing with you. He's actually 58. <laughs> <laughs> OK, right, I see. You're going to be a handful, aren't you, oh, boys? Mom. <laughs> oh, you must be TP. Hmm, what does TP stand for? <coughs> Tiny prick. <laughs> it stands for... Team player. I see. Of course. How long have you had that nickname? Ever since Nolan decided Terry Prodnos was a shit name for a member of a boy band. Oh, no co Ronnie. Yeah, no co Ronnie. No co Ronnie. No. Sorry, what does no co mean? Ah, it's the opposite of. It's the opposite of. Ah. For fuck's sake. So co. Yeah, so cohesive. So cohesive. You pre tease say. You kill. Cool. Right, okay, thank you, Stacey. <laughs> We're out of Sorry, touch. Uh -huh. Not your fault. She's an even. So you guys met through a popular show on one of our rival channels, didn't you? Yeah, team players. There are other Z. channels. <laughs> so how did that work then? Well, actually, Dell and I knew each other from school. We were actually and classmates. And fuck's sake, Nolan, mate. Give someone else a chance. We all went on team players. We all auditioned. The judges put us into bands. And um, yeah, we went to their houses and they just put us into bands. Yeah. It's an example of how we're greater than the sum of our parts when we work in harmony. And occasionally singing it. <laughs> so every week on the show, they get these bands and uh, they give them a song that the producer just found from under the bin somewhere. Actually, I thought. write the song. And um, <laughs> the public would phone in and decide which song they like best. Right, and then uh, the losers would be eliminated. Ah. And then uh, the losers would be eliminated. Yeah. Mum. What? No cool. Pretty. So no cool. The band who get the most approval so gets to play their song again. The the again. Sure. Song again. Uh, so, so what happens to the losers sure. then? Mum. What? What? What do I keep doing wrong? We don't use the L word anymore. Lose? Would you please stop saying that? Everybody wins with team that players. It's a pejorative. That it's a word designed to diminish. At Go Getters, I learned very early that 
We I only win when everybody that. wins. <laughs> Sorry, that's just, that's not real life, is it? That's just sports board, that's no? Life, it? That's just... Thought you were Soko. Yeah, I... Thought you were Soko. I am, I am Soko. Nah, you're a shrinker. Can't be friends with shrinkers. She doesn't know what you're talking, you're talking about. about. She doesn't understand. Uh, so, I do understand, actually, Stacey. What's a shrinker? Well, a, shrink, a shrinker. What's a pretty, Mum? What's a pretty? I, well, I think it means someone who's older, pre doesn't it? Well, I think pre territories. It older, it's someone it? who turned 18 before the new someone future. Oh. We call you preties. Uneven. Mimi's. Nonks. Mimi's. It's not her fault she's old. She can't help it. I'm not her fault. She's old. I'm trying actually. to help you here. I don't think I need your help. See? I don't Total Mimi. Is that so? Total Mimi. Yes, obviously. <laughs> yes, obviously. One foot in the grave, Megan. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, the transition centre. You know what the real problem with you lot is? You know what the real problem You just can't get over the fact that your beloved Disrupt are gone and you just don't fit in anymore. <laughs> but the truth is, Disrupt were violent, no-co, pricks being led by a fucking psycho. I'm glad they lost and you should be too. Listen, not everyone over 30 supported Disrupt Stacey. Not everyone, no. But one fuck off lot of you did. Lot of you did. So go, Stacy. So go, Stacy. <sighs> Painfully reminiscent of real life. We've all learned maybe a little bit more than we expected to there. <laughs> I'm genuinely delighted to have I'm met Heat Rash. And before we end the show tonight, I think you're going to sing for us, aren't you? Yes, that's right. We're going to sing a song from Girls and Why We Love Them All called Pieces of My Heart, which is about a real relationship I have with an actual girl. Oh, no, one give it a rest, mate. No one cares. Go on, let's get on these stools, lads. Right. <laughs> with an actual girl. As opposed to a what? Like a robot girl? So, um, Stacy, um, I get your contact. Oh, 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 she's 15. Oh, oh, oh. Go she on, doesn't look 15. Go sing your song, Terry. Yeah. Christ. Right you are. <laughs> right you are. Adult actors playing high schoolers syndrome again. So, here they are with their latest single, they Pieces of My Heart. Latest single. Are you excited, Stacy? Not for me, no. I only listen to blip music. And a bit of jizz core. Pop music is... Ah yes, I knew I meant to mention this earlier. Apparently these newfangled boy bands change singer all the bloody time. Try to follow along, eh? Keep the shot on whoever is currently singing the lead vocal. I saw you standing by the man you sent away with a brand new pair of blackers, baby, do you remember? You took the first of the pieces of my heart. Wandered into a bush and grabbed a vodka and stank. Took our assets and our wealth and drew them out of the bag. I gave you little pieces. Of my heart I didn't know two hearts Could ever feel like this Girl, it's like you were custom made for me By Remington Smith I take all of the loves that love didn't love last And leave them in the uneven path Share the new future as my bride Snatch me inside There's no need to hide All the times that you cry As my old man used to say You blow me away I just want you to stay Shaking all the way through incisors We held each other as things fell apart We took a train through all the territories And we threw away the rules and wrote our personal stories You took a dozen pieces I 
am switching a little too fast. I didn't have it in me to focus on the right singer and also do the multiplier, okay? All I worry about my wages. Final thoughts tonight. And I've actually asked Stacey to write a few and they're just being programmed onto the auto cue now. Uh, now, I have no idea what she's going to say. So, fingers on that bleep button in the broadcast room just in case. Um, take it away, Stacey. Take it away, Stacey. My name is Stacey. I guess you know that by now. I don't know why I put that in there. Anyway. I don't watch the news. There's no need. You hear all the important stuff from your mates, so... I don't know what's considered important anymore. But I'm pretty sure that it's not rehashed movies and fucking boy bands, so... Anyway. She's right. I'm going to talk about what's important to me. When Advance were first elected when Advance six years ago, elected, I was nine six years ago, and in a home. I was nine. Not a family home like you call a home. home. This was a state like children's home. It was, was a state children's home. <laughs> it was fucking awful, actually. It was like a Charles Dickens book. The roof leaked and the walls were damp some mornings. The food was bad. Drugs and alcohol were everywhere. No one cared. You had to watch your back all the time because there weren't enough staff to manage us. Because there weren't enough staff. And yes, as you'd imagine, there was a lot of there was a lot of some bad stuff went down there with some of the staff. Okay, not all of them, but the others knew. Not all of them, and they didn't stop it. And then Advance won the election. Advance won the election, and like a miracle. What's the sound next to me? Change. They got better. They had nicer food. The home was not just repaired, but redecorated and kitted out with books and sports stuff and musical instruments and video games. Most of the staff were fired and the new ones, which there were more of, spent time talking and working with the bullies. And you know what? A second miracle. It worked. The bullying stopped. Life, my life, got better. Because finally, there was enough money to do the good things, and Advance had the guts to do it. I joined Go Getters, and on Liberation Night, that gave me a group of friends that I could talk with when the bombs went off and the power went out. Another miracle. I wasn't alone anymore. And that was the night I finally understood the importance of being in the team. So here's my final thought. So I know thought. the people who were doing better under the old system long to go back. You say, we were freer. But what you mean is, we were richer. But for every one of you, there is a hundred of me. And even now, after all you've had taken away, you are still doing better than I am, than I likely ever will. You still have homes of your own and families of your own who love you. And I'll never have that. 
So maybe you should stop looking for the worst interpretation so of everything this amazing government does and realise. Amazing government does. It's not for you. It's for the millions like me. It's for the millions. And you can cry and bleat all you want, but you're never going to get your money back because it's already been spent. Never get your money back because it's already been on miracles. On miracles. It's time. It's time. It's time! Tomorrow better. And we're out. Whoo! Alright. Yes! Yes, that was more than alright. Nicely done. Mm. I think you might have actually given them something. To that was actually an incredible speech coming from someone who we didn't really care about up until now. The territories are expanding with countries queuing to add their voices to the warm symphony of the new future. It's an exciting time. But there's one thing missing, and that's where you come in. Advance are calling on talented, creative people from across the territories to submit their most stirring creations as entries in the United Territories Anthem Slam. We're looking for a new song. <sighs> Three for the advanced new ads. Hey, but that speaks from and to I should be eating hearts. well, you know, according and to Advance's system. Of cooperation and Probably got my. Passport issues figured out now, right? <laughs> okay, finally one A plus. Okay, I'll take it. I don't know what I could. What was what messed me over? See, no offensive words, no interference. But the the second sequence was kind of boring because we couldn't switch cameras, but because there was only one available camera. Exceedingly poor edit. That's not my problem. Advance angered by content. Disrupt ruin the broadcast. Yeah, I... <sighs> we played all the advanced tapes, but they're still angry. No, we have to do something, okay? But I do think Stacy's speech was interesting, though, because she's saying she benefited, and that people like me, the old farts, are longing for the older system because we did better under them. And that kind of does make me think, hey, is that is that really true? Oh, okay, full wages, not so bad. All these companies are gone, basically. Okay. And there's no way Advance is not going up now because, yeah. Uh, I was very... I was almost gonna be really disappointed if we didn't see anything with Disrupt. But it seems like... I think la next broadcast is gonna be the last one, right? So... Something will happen in the end. But right now, it's a total... totalitarian state. Oh my god. And this is Jenny. She's the floor manager. Hi, Stacey. Hmm. That's Colin. He, um... Do you know what? Just don't talk to Colin. Not getting involved in bringing your daughter to work, eh, Colin? Nah, nah, we don't believe in it. All right, come and sit next to Mum. <laughs> believe in what? How long have they been together, though? Like, maximum five years, and probably less than that. Just days. Atta girl. Ten seconds, everybody. The system, like, reassign them together or something. That explains so much. Okay, we are going in five, four, three. Team awards. Sterility. How are people okay with this? I mean, of course, we know that they're trying to create this image that everyone is okay with it, but secretly, a lot of people are probably, like, not okay with the situation here. Everyone shouldn't be. Which kind of goes back to what Stacy was saying earlier too, because I definitely feel like there is a generational component to this. People in different age groups who have different experiences might feel differently about all these policies. We absolutely love hearing the way our neighbors and team members have been able to become better people. So do let us know your stories here. You can do this bit, Stacy. <laughs> Let us know your story. Happy now? Yeah, ecstatic. Ah, uh, you know what? This actually used to be called the National Nightly News. Now it's just... Nobody cares. Everything all right here? Okay, Stacey? Yeah, I noticed he changed the name, but is there like a... It's just an abbreviation, but maybe it's to get people away from thinking about stuff like the nation or I don't know. Can I get you a glass of water? Was Good luck. Mm, kill me. Oh, sorry, I forgot my murdering kit today. Pissy. Mm. Do you want me to leave? No, Stacey, I just want you to try. Coming back from the titles, quiet in the studio. 
Megan kind of looks like she's wearing scrubs, not like a an anchor no, uniform. <laughs> She liked the fans. Evening, everybody, and welcome she doesn't to sound like she does here. Oh yeah, she does like advance. Including you, Mum. She's angry at the world, but she loves advance. They used to at least, you know, talk a little bit more frankly about what's going on here, but with Stacy here now, they can't even do that behind the scenes anymore. We had pretty long segments today. All three of them were pretty long. Cracked a little bit of a smile here. <laughs> oh. Could do that. oh. <laughs> Never mind, I guess. Yeah, she's feeling kind of awkward about it. She's glancing over from time to time. But they're not really talking because, I don't know, she's actually interested in watching this. Who could have guessed? Later on, during the red carpet, they kept like... They kept like walking off the screen. They couldn't even wait behind the scenes because there's nothing to talk about. I think she definitely wants to comment, but she's holding back a lot because it's not Jenny next to her. Hey, Jeremy! I was reading the comments and it seems like Jeremy is actually alive canonically in this playthrough, but it's just that there's a, there's a bit of a bug with the disrupt thing where it mentioned that he's dead. Because apparently that one broadcast, if you cut away to ads before you see him shoot himself, then he doesn't. Which is something they didn't really show that well here, huh? Because I thought the rushes were basically all the behind the scenes of what we hadn't seen before, but... Maybe they should have filmed a second one showing him getting arrested or not dying or something. Wow. Very respectful. She's 15, right? So she was only 10 when Advance came into power. I do want to hear her speech again. Yeah, they're not really talking here, they're just looking at the, the videos together. What? <laughs> She's laughing at what's happening, but she might genuinely think it's like disrespectful. Like, Mom, why are you being so disrespectful to Julia, the great Julia Salisbury? <laughs> Who even knows what these kids are thinking of anymore? You're pro co, you're no co, and pre t, and whatever the hell they were talking about earlier. <laughs> don't prove. Oh, for fuck's sake! Oh, you don't prove. It's fucking disgusting. I hope she gets sent to Betterment, but people don't have a right to protest. I wouldn't expect you to understand. Well, try me. You know, maybe I'm not such an old fuddy duddy like you think I am. Fuddy duddy. Oh, fucking says it all. Well, what would you call me then? Oh, actually, don't answer that. Let's just see how this plays out. She grew up in an entirely different, like under an entirely different mindset. So to her, like, things that people take for granted in democracies, she just doesn't even. It just doesn't make sense to her. It's not her fault, but 
it's a very sad symptom of what's happened to this nation ever since Advance came into power. <laughs> oh my god, are they... Are they actually naked when they film this? I don't even know. That would be something. She's- she doesn't want to see people getting beat up. She's like, eh, whatever, I don't really- this is just... Whatever it is. She got upset by it. And she's like, eh. I mean, it's not like we love the rich people, but people do have a right to protest, or they should have a right to protest. In a regular functioning democracy anyway, but I don't think we have one of those anymore around here. Well, you can drop me back. There you go, someone your age. See your type. Don't even. Or you can drop me back to the home right fucking now. Don't worry, I'll have the car running by the end of the show. Huh. Whoa. Doesn't surprise me. It's not my first rodeo. You lot never stick around long. I wonder why. Did she just bring her in for the show? Oh my god, that's... kind of feel bad for her, too. Something's never changed, huh? Like, people being thrown around by the foster system. Did she get this kid just for bring your kids to work day? Oh my god. So my question about, oh, how long have they been together? I guess, one day. <laughs> Damn. Or maybe she was joking just now. I don't know, man. I couldn't tell. She's like, you know, I'll bring you back to the home right after the show, but... Scary. The pre teas were saggy, and that little prick will never lose his virginity. Okay, well... Yeah, so I, I only saw this part earlier, and I thought she hated Advance, but no, she Is loves him. <laughs> and we're out! You know, somewhere else in this building, in a tiny room all by themselves, is a person called Alex Winston. Now, I would really appreciate it if you could get through one sentence tonight without making them reach for the bleep button every time you do. Do you think we could try that? Alex and Winston can go fuck themselves. Is it just Thank me, you. or did that segment remind you of the good old days? Well, like everything's spiralling out of control into some kind of tragic comic disaster. Yeah, that. It's just like having him back in the chair. <laughs> Do you reckon he's watching us somewhere? Laughing. I don't think he is. Jeremy? <laughs> are you watching us? <laughs> are you receiving us? Are you fucking with us? Oh, right. So she can swear. Well, we're off air, that's why. Yeah, it's... They grew up in a different generation and they experienced different things. She was only 10, she just doesn't understand. So, Patrick and Robin are just gonna grab who they can and then you've got these generic links on the autocue to glue it all together. They do know I have a Queen's View degree in journalism. Bet you wish you'd studied something useful, don't I? All this bring your daughter to work day. What a joke. Where is our honoured guest? I don't know, she's probably sniffing around that boy band, Hotspot. Heat Rash. Hotspot won it last year. Heat <laughs> Rash. Oh god, they're running out of names, aren't they? I hear the computer comes up with them, the songs too. Wow. Oh, there she is, and just in time too. That's ten seconds, everybody. What have you been up to? And what's it to you? And we are going in five, four, three. Maybe not too much happened in this one, because I saw Megan and Stacey were walking in and out a lot. Wait. Oh, I didn't even realize they weren't speaking English. <laughs> That's how focused I was on the broadcast. No, I just... Captain Quasar. There's a difference. Captain Quasar. 
а я не заметил. Капитан! Упереди, сказала ты! Я кое-что нашла. Ой, это... Что такое? Was it a different language earlier? I thought it was English earlier, but... <laughs> I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Even she's seen the previous one. No, I'm pretty sure it was English earlier, right? It's they changed it. <laughs> Probably a release day bug. I'll show you this way. I went to the washroom. Wait, they can do that? Oh! Oh, it's separated! Like, the different interviews are separated. So this one is just them being away from the washroom for a long time. Yeah, this part, I guess for the red carpet, it's a little bit difficult for them to do multiple angles because everyone's just standing still, getting interviews done the whole time. I'm not sure if we could have even gotten a better grade during that segment because we really just couldn't even switch the cameras. Okay, they just never even came back by the end. I waited all that time for nothing. Ah, uh, was there even anything during these ones then? Because we did see them pretty well. Hello, my darling. So good to see you. Let's move this along though, yeah? I've got real people to talk to. He only does one beastly interview a day. Megan, I'm joined by not one. Yeah, these segments were filmed separately. So I guess they couldn't or they didn't sync them. I'm not sure if something stopped them from doing so, but that's what it seems like. Says he's snorting her in the toilets before. Yeah, tennis says he's snorting her in the toilets before the night's over. Oh god. <laughs> uh, Lil C and her dad, her creeper dad, who is also her manager. <laughs> Patrick Bannon is just gone. He invented that look. Oh. Jesus! <laughs> You know, I actually invented that look. Yeah. I made my ex-boyfriend wear it in the police lineup. He got off. Veggie you, Veggie, the green grocer, doesn't get parole for another six years. Jesus. Oh God. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, this guy's not poor at all. That whole story about. Oh, I was picked up by some shop person and my mom died early. And the shop person also died early. <laughs> Two of whatever here. I'm going to see if yeah, I can that's grab it. a moment with someone rather special. I hope you're not too jealous, Megan. Back to you. Yeah, I quite enjoyed that, actually. <laughs> Julian was the captain of the chess club at St. Barry's. Always hated him for that. Oh, did you guys go to school together? You okay? It's just fucking stupid. How am I supposed to talk about something that I haven't even seen? Oh, come on, you know what the whole It's the story of her life. It's just the usual shit, isn't it? Amazing night, groundbreaking film, wonderful to be here. Oh, you like my outfit? Oh, thank you so much. It was designed by Free Free Pumpkin Nuts from Territory <laughs> 2. <laughs> Sorry, I... <laughs> Why? But once, pumpkin nuts is not a swear word, thank you. I want a pair of heels by Fru Fru Pumpkin Nuts. Oh no, so you think you do. But actually it's his cousin that designs shoes better. Mm -hmm. And what's his name? Eli Watercart. No, 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 her name oh. is Phoebe Randall. Coming back uh, now, quiet uh, in the studio. <laughs> oh, they were getting Thanks, along. Robin. But I think Stacey and I are probably in quite enough trouble where we are. So, three big names there, Stacey. Yeah, big names. Any thoughts about them? <laughs> Bumbronk is so old he's Yeah, that was kind of sweet to see though, even though they normally don't get along. The one moment where they can actually have a moment. You could get sued for libel. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
Okay, she was just mouthing off about the disrupt loving <laughs> rapper. The like there. That really was not appropriate, and you know it. We could get sued for libel. You could get sued for libel. Uh, yeah, it was funny. It was though. not funny. It was crass and it was cruel, and it makes you look just so. Oh, don't be a bloody hypocrite, Randy Cunn. That is when the cameras are not rolling. There is a difference between who we are, this side of the camera, and then who we show the rest oh, of the world. So you're fake. That's what you're saying. Everybody's a little bit fake, oh, Stacey. I'm fucking not. Stacey, come, come back. Stacey, come. Fuck's sake, come back here. I, I wonder if there is an element of. Megan not only being upset because she said something inappropriate on TV, but also because Stacy was insulting Disrupt specifically. Because then right before this, she was asking her opinion on the stars and she was like, oh, you know, those people are horrible and then, you know, Disrupt loving whatever. And Jesus is a Disrupt loving wanker who should have died with the rest of them three years ago. Hmm, you're right. You agree? Yeah, like that sort of opinion. Maybe inside. Because I think we can all see that inside. I don't think she actually is that pro advanced. She's like me. We're trying to do our jobs for a living. We're trying to survive here. But inside, we have different feelings. And that might have contributed to her blowing up at Stacy just now, too. Say, come back here! In front of the camera, we're pro advanced. We love the government. But behind it, we can say other things. As long as it doesn't get aired. You guys coming back? Nope. Really? <laughs> no, no. Top three would have to be Malibu Chris, Jurassic Chris, and Chris in Boots. I don't think there's even. <laughs> I can't believe the, the Titwank, Titwank Tony's friends became celebrities. What happened to Titwank Tony? Back to prison again? Exclusively for them, I'm sure they'll love the movie. What a pleasure to meet with such varied and talented stars. Megan. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know where they find them. Hmm. She doesn't even... See, this lady became Patrick Bannon after the whole thing, you know, after he basically got disappeared away and... I don't think she would even say anything too bad behind cameras. She's still talking about the Chris's the whole time. Good job. Yeah, I guess they weren't able to film all this continuously. Now, do not get up from this seat again until the adverts. I'll send someone to find your temporarily adopted monster spawn. You do your job. Yeah. I really thought we were getting somewhere. You were. Teenagers just use their parents as punching bags, didn't you? I don't know. I, my parents were always at work. I definitely punched David a few times, though. Brother? Doing better than me. She literally hasn't said a full word to me since she arrived. Mm -hmm. Ten seconds, everybody! I bet you're an annoyingly perfect teenager. Yeah, I think maybe I was. Going in five, four, Wait, three. who's Patrick talking to? <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. What a colourful uh, interview there <laughs> on what looks like an amazing night. They certainly know how to make an entrance. I hope. And the automated... <laughs> you know, that degree in uh, journalism from Queensview is not for nothing. Robin, you seen anything? Jenny? <clears throat> Has anyone seen um, Jenny? Uh, dressing rooms. Dressing rooms. Right. They're trying to make it look all homey, like, oh, we're bringing our kids to work, but like, she had to find a fake kid somewhere. <laughs> Probably sponsored by Advance. Fake one. <laughs> Man, I, I completely forgot about these guys and you're a little like, uh, give me your lunch money or like whatever. <laughs> That's the only line I remember from that thing. Oops. Four my show reel. Four my show reel. Um, 
and uh, after the movie, remind me that I need to buy some dental floss. <laughs> Thank you. Are we going to be okay? I don't know. For you? They were getting somewhere. Ten seconds! And then that whole blow-up scene I'm happened. Sorry for how fuck off are you? Going in five. I still go to the cinema. You should get yourself a video recorder, like the one at the home. Well, yeah, I've got a video recorder. It's just not the same, is it? You're right, it's better. No unevens chatting and chewing all the way through. Generation yeah, gap. Cuddle on the back row. Doesn't that happen anymore? In public? What's wrong with you? Nothing. Nothing's wrong with me. Feeling better? Mm. All right, you are. I've got to get set up for heat rash. I think Ronnie's on something. I know he is. It was on his rider. <laughs> Apparently, it's medicinal. Ronnie's always high. Give him orange juice. My God, she speaks. He's a stupid cunt. And just like that, you wish she wouldn't. <laughs> how does she know so much about them? Does she like them? That boy band? I love how they don't even capitalize the R here. It looks like heat trash. <laughs> uh, we seem to be a bit bunched up at this end. Oh, don't worry. It's so cool. It's what now? It's so oh, here's Megan. Uh, she's going to be interviewing you. Hello. Hi. Hi. This is her... What was Soko again? Stacey. Something cohesive? Well, so cohesive? Hello there, Stacey. If we can't be polite, you're gonna have to wait in the dressing room. They know each other. Whatever. Do you want to go and wait in the dressing room? Hmm? Dude, you're making her you're making her look bad. No what? No. Not... Thank you. Okay. And sit up straight. Yo, Get Megan. That's 10 seconds, everybody. That's not how you no raise cool. a kid, man. Fucking right, no co. What's that? What's, what's no co? What's no Bring in five, four, three. Welcome back. Welcome back. Oh, this hair. <laughs> See, they capitalize it here. <laughs> Fit in anymore. But the truth is. More than we expected to there. <laughs> I'm genuinely They're yelling on air again. <laughs> Are you excited, Stacey? Not for me, no. Only. Okay, okay. I mean, they were. This totally had the whole boy band feel. I don't know how they do it. This game combines expertise from a lot of different disciplines, like, you know, making a game, writing a good story, and then apparently writing catchy pop songs as well. <laughs> it's actually pretty impressive. Because as I understand it, their team is pretty small. I don't even know how they know all these things. <laughs> now it's almost time for final thoughts tonight. A pretty good speech. This is a side that people like Megan might not necessarily have seen or understand. Especially because she's been cozying up to Bozeman and the Prime Ministers and all that.
Unbelievable. Wow, thank you. Thank you, Stacey, for that. Uh, my name's Megan Wolf. Let's keep making tomorrow better. And we're out. Is that all right? Oh, yes. Yes, that was more than all right. Nicely done. Mm. I think you might have actually given them something to think about. So I guess you're going to be taking me back to the home now, then. Um, I was thinking we could go out somewhere and, I don't know, have, have a meal, talk about our options, if that's It touched okay. her too. Of course, Miss Wolf. Security will be standing by. Thank you. So they're always there then? Uh, there was a, a thing a few years ago now. Oh, with that Jeremy bloke? I heard about that. Everyone did. Were you here back then? Doesn't look old enough. No, she didn't realize she was. On me. She was right there. Yeah, she does that. Yum. Stacy is right though, because there's a lot that we feel like you know, Advance is doing so much worse now, and it's so totalitarian. But then, there is a flip side where some people are benefiting from this too. We might not be seeing it, but it's happening. Mm hmm. We don't need to see the adverts because we got to see them all perfectly, and there's only three. And we also saw the disrupt hack, so I guess that is it. Next time! Oh my god, I, I think without any issues, the next one should be the finale then. What's gonna happen? Advance is currently in power, they seem like they're pretty comfortably in power. There's still some dissidents here and there, but will Disrupt be able to make a comeback? Should Disrupt make a comeback? Because if they actually do, then people like Stacy might start suffering again. Is that something that we should do? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. What about Jeremy? Is he gonna show up? Find out next time on Not For Broadcast. But now you start to see, yes, eh? The people never happy. It never enough. I cannot believe you do that.